congratulations on, on this one. Thank Absolutely you. fantastic. Thank you. Uh, what was your kind of entry, in, entry point into this? Was it the book or was it the script or was it a bit the of book, both? The book, I've read the book, yes, yes. which I love. And then I got the script and I thought, hmm, I wonder if this is going to be a bit sort of spare. Um, but actually, Ian had done such a great job. And when we started to work on it, I mean, it was a no-brainer. For God's sake, it's a huge, wonderful, complex role about someone I've never seen on screen, a female judge in the family court. I was so relieved to, to find it. Um, and developing the role was, I suppose, one of the great privileges because I got to meet so many women judges in the high court, in the family court. It's interesting, actually, because the family court, you learn so much, was, is sort of thought of as the kind of poor second cousin to the criminal court, which is, you know, the real the, the blokey, much better. <laughs> but of course, men in the family court say, once you've done a month there, you need to go and lie down because, I mean, it's it's so painful. Can you imagine cases like Charlie Gard coming past all the time? And not just that, divorce cases, cases about custody of children where there's so much pain on both sides and sometimes enormous sums of money involved and things. How do you keep your head? I don't know. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a morally complex story, but also the great thing I loved about it is that it's very human. There's moments of levity and, and kind of realness about it, particularly between you and St Stanley. I mean, it must have been great to be in something that has the moral complexity, but also a realness to it. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly so. That's Richard Eyre, I think. He's very good at keeping it real. And of course, he's worked in the theatre a lot. And the theatre is a place where you're often doing things about the most appalling murder and whatever it is especially with Shakespeare and you laugh a lot so we did but we did we did have to work on that me and Finn because if you think about their scenes together are so intense the, the first time they meet he's dying and she's got the power to save his life or not I mean that's the first scene with them together so that intense rapport that they develop literally in seconds is because of the intensity of their situation and who sees that that's just so rare Absolutely. it's such a joy to have a grown-up movie to go and talk about yeah uh, just finally quickly I wanted to ask you about uh, Men in Black uh, oh, yeah? is, this, yeah. is, this, is this the hair for, for Men in Black have you it's started like, yes it's actually well it's my hair which I like <laughs> I mean obviously died to within an inch of its life I'm surprised it's still attached to my head actually <laughs> but um, I, I love this so I'm going to keep it for as long as I can fantastic thank you so much for your thank time you. pleasure thank you let me just ask you about uh, how you first got involved and, and talk about your character Adam because mm -hmm. I can imagine there was a lot of research that you did because it's such a kind of unique character in many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I first got involved in it. I sent the script and the audition by my agent. Um, and the minute I'd read it, I knew it was something that I really wanted to be involved in. I just found the script so incredibly engaging and so moving that um, I was just drawn to it. And I think the characters in it are incredibly complex and, and very human, you know, in a way that is kind of hard to come by. Um, so, yeah. You must be about there's a there's a fantastic scene the first scene when you get to meet Emma for the first time she comes mm. to the hospital and the two of you play so well off each other and there's so much uh, kind of between you mm. uh, how easy was that to grab was that just a very easy because I can imagine working with someone like Emma Thompson mm. it's very very easy and relaxed she but makes, also you can yeah. learn a lot as you're going I guess totally I mean I learned so much but she she makes it so easy just with how she is um, she's so lovely and so giving as an actor. Um, but she's also just interested in getting to know you and, and her, I feel, got on really well outside of filming. So we talked loads and really got to know each other and that's just kind of, I feel like to have good chemistry kind of on screen you really have to know each other, not just as, as each other's characters. So. I'm also working with Richard Eyre because he's made some very, very amazing movies, some very dramatic mm. stuff, and, and he's been around. What was it like working with him? Because going from Christopher Nolan to, mm. to him, I mean, you're getting so many amazing filmmakers to work with at the yeah. early stage in your career. You must be delighted that you've been given that chance. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think Richard Richard's reputation totally precedes himself. You know, um, I think he's just an incredible, incredible man, incredible director, and very specific in, in how he works. He, he's so good at picking out subtle details and bring them to the forefront and making you recognise the power they have. Um, and it's just the perfect director for this script. Uh, once obviously you've done this and you did Dunkirk before, which was a huge success in this mm. country. Uh, what's, what's next for you? I mean, many places to go though, to work in Crystal Nolan, you kind of work up to something like that and yeah. obviously working with Emma Thompson. But yeah. I mean, where do you go from here? What's next for you? Uh, I did a film last year called Roads with Sebastian Schipper. Um, so I'm not sure when that's coming out, but that's sort of the, the next thing I'll, I'll be seen in. 
Yeah. If we get any calls from Marvel or DC yet for, for anything else, because you know, someone like Tom Holland, obviously, right, we yeah. spoke to, I think it was an anniversary of ours recently, we spoke to him like five years ago when he wasn't Spider-Man. Okay, yeah, on, yeah, But yeah. I mean, is, are those kind of movies something you'd like to do in the future, should the opportunity arise? Um, I, I wouldn't want to say no to anything at the moment. I think at the moment I'm just reading stuff and seeing what I respond to, seeing what I like. Uh, trying to go for things that I think are going to challenge me as much as possible um, and that I respond to. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Listen, congratulations on the film, mate. Thank you so much Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank I you. I can imagine when you wrote the novel that potentially there was going to be a film version, but then when someone says to you, oh, it's going to be Emma Thompson in the lead, I mean, you must have been delighted. Well, the first move was to show the unpublished novel to Richard, actually, uh, in the hope that he would say yes. Uh, and when he did, uh, then Emma was the first and only name really and so when she said yes we knew we were we were in business yeah absolutely uh, one of the things I loved about uh, the movie I haven't read the book a shame to say but in the movie there's obviously the more complexity story but also it's a very human story and there's elements of levity and everything yes. else I mean yeah. were you were you you must be delighted that they managed to capture the book and that on, on screen as well yes um, you know the, the relationship for example between uh, the judge and the clerk uh, very much again I hope I provide the right the lines for them, but it so much depends on the chemistry between the actors. Yeah. Uh, and then, actually, uh, the very sensitive direction of, uh, of Richard. And, uh, we had a marvelous crew, actually, as well. I have to say, it was one of the happiest film sets I've been on, but what, just despite the, you know, the, the, the gravity of the, the material itself. Yeah, you've had a good run of, of, of these movies. Obviously, Chesil Beach last year, which was which was fantastic. Or this year, yeah, this, fact, year, just, this year, yeah, just a couple of months I mean, ago. Is, yeah. is there any in the pipeline for any of your other novels to come to the screen? Yet? I've adapted Sweet Tooth, a novel of mine, Cold War, spy novel. Uh, I'm not quite sure where we are with that yet. Uh, and um, of course, we had. Um, uh, the Child in Time on television with oh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. So it has yeah. been a busy summer. Yeah, <laughs> a busy yeah. summer. Are you, are you happy that you, not only your your stories coming to life, but that they've been received so well and that people are taking a lot from them? I'm delighted. And one of the great things about making a movie is you move into a slightly different audience. Uh, I mean, they overlap, of course, but there's always the pleasure of. Uh, and I noticed this happened with Atonement. Sort of to draw other people into the to the literary novel, into the serious novel. So that's always a pleasure. Yeah. I mean, How did you get involved, and what was it about the story that kind of? Spoke um, to I you? was first in, I was first asked by my agent. I got an email saying, "Can I sing?" And I went, "What do you mean, can I sing? Everyone can sing." He said, "Yeah, but can you sing carols?" I said, "Of course I can sing carols." And he said, "But can you sing? Uh, um, can you sing Wagner? Uh, 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 no, was it Wagner? I think it was Wagner. Yes, Wagner." And I said, "Well, I'm not sure I can do that, but." But uh, I, I laid something down on my telephone and I sang to my telephone so that Richard could hear me singing. <laughs> and then I went along for an audition and I, and I had a meet with, with, uh, with Richard and uh, uh, um, with, with Duncan Kenworthy and that's how it happened. And I, I must say, uh, strangely, before I went for the meeting, I hadn't read the script. I, hadn't, uh, I didn't really know that Emma was involved. I didn't know anything about it, but I did know Richard and I trusted him implicitly. Um, and uh, and when I got the script, when we talked about doing the part, I was it was just a, a gift, an absolute gift. Uh, working with Emma, I mean, the two of you have great chemistry, and the, the scenes between you give the film a little bit of levity in the sense that you know your human connection, everything yeah. else, and your friends and everything else. It's quite dramatic, but you do give it a bit of levity. Was it good to kind of play? in that kind of sandbox with her. Uh, absolutely it was. And what was lovely was that we were both able to play from a professional point of view in the courtroom and then also to be able to play from a social point of view as friends in, in her apartment. And music I love, she loves music, Emma loves music, I love music. And, uh, and although, you know, well, I mean, it, it was just wonderful to be given an opportunity to concentrate on something like music yeah, with absolutely. someone who I really, really admire. Yes, we uh, we saw yeah. your King, uh, King Lear, so a bit of a reunion this evening. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. <laughs> Actually, start, uh, the thing is, we finished this film um, May of last year, um, whereas I've only finished King Lear at the end of March this year. So it's sort of odd that I'm coming to this after King Lear. Have you enjoyed yeah. being busy? I mean, it's been a busy year for you. Have you enjoyed uh, the, the two projects together? Listen, I, I love it, of course. I love working and um, I want to, you know, go on till somebody stops me. Uh, just what was it about this, this story that, that kind of spoke to you? Was it the book or was it the screenplay? Or was it a kind of combination um, of both? Well, the book, Ian told me about what he was writing when he was writing it. So I was interested before he'd even finished the book and he told me something of what the story was and then as soon as he 
finished the book, he gave me the manuscript. And I just loved the combination of the, the personal and the professional and the way that uh, both prof professional and personal stories are weaved together so brilliantly and so painfully. And Emma at the top of the tree, I mean, she's fantastic in the movie. Was she she's was brilliant. the one and only choice, Ian said. She's, yeah, you, you can't imagine the film being made without her. Uh, more than that, it wouldn't have been made without her because we wouldn't have got the film finance. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.